Welcome to reading and using the text part. Even when we're only writing a little bit of Python, the text part is an invaluable tool for understanding what's happening in our network. And there are several different ways that we can both interact with and get to our text port. So let's take a look at a few of them. One way we can open up the text port is by using the dialogs dropdown and then selecting text port and dats. We also have a quick key here that we can use to open up a floating version of our text port. Now, this text port could be moved to any display, and we can also go ahead and minimize or close it. Another way that we can open a text port is to split our view. And with our view split, we can actually change our network view here with our drop down to display a text port and dat right here alongside our network. This is often very helpful when we're doing lots of scripting, and we want to be able to have a kind of docked version of our text port that we can see. Let's go ahead and leave our text port up here for a moment. If we add a text dat here into our network, it's not uncommon that we're going to write some Python inside of our text dat. Now, we can actually write it directly here into our operator, something like print uh, this is text dat. And if we turn on our syntax highlighting, go to our common page and select Python, we can go ahead and right click and run this script over here. And that's one way that we can interact with our text port. Now, something else we can do is we can drag our text dats over into the text port and select run. And this will actually put in a command that will allow us to run the contents of our text dat from our text port. We can use the up uh, arrow keys to move back through previous commands to be able to bring them up and then run them as well. Another way that we can actually use a text port is to drag our text dat over here into the text port drop it, and select Open Dat. And when we do this, this allows us to actually go ahead and edit the contents uh, of our dat right here inside the text port. I'm going to add another line to my text dat. And we'll see that when I click back inside the network that my text dat updates with that content. I can also move back and forth between uh, multiple tabs here of different uh, dats that are open at any given time. If I want to clear the contents of the text uh, text port, I can go ahead and use the clear command here at the top, or I can use clear with a set of parentheses to do that. Let's go ahead and use the arrow keys, the up arrow keys to go back through previous commands. So we can see that I could go ahead and bring back my run command, or I could go back to my clear command and use the enter key to run it. Let's look at another practical example of how we might interact with the text port. I'm going to grab a movie file in top, and I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the network. I'm going to connect that next to a level top here. Now, we often use text stats here. Let's go ahead and grab a text stat and add it into the network and make sure that we've set this to be Python to interact with operators. So I'm going to write just a little simple script. So I'm going to go ahead and make this viewer active. And I'm going to give myself a helper. I'm going to give myself a variable. My level top is the operator that is level one. And if you've got sharp eyes, you've already seen that I've made a typo, and that's okay. I want to leave that typo in place because what we want to do is start to see how we can debug our code. So now what I want to do is I want that level top its parameter called invert to be set to one. Now what I'm expecting to happen is I'm expecting that this parameter is going to go all the way over here to one, and that's going to happen when I run this script. So let's go ahead and right click and run the script. Well, that isn't what happened. In fact, Instead, what I got is I have an error message. So I have a nice error over here. And I also see that error message has populated the text port. Now, I usually want to read my error messages from the bottom to the top. So this results in a run operation, a result in an exception. OK. My next line up here, so a none type object has no attribute par. And if I look up one more line, this happened on line three of uh, project one text two. So if I take a look over here, you can see, so my error occurred on this line, and the error that I got was a none type object had no attribute par. Now, more often than not, that tells us that the uh, operator that we've tried to target, that we have the wrong path to it, because instead of actually getting an operator, we have a none type. So let's clear our message here, and now let's add a debug message to see if we can kind of better understand what's happening. So let's give ourselves a little help. So we're going to debug level top. This is a way for us to see if we actually have an operator. So let's go ahead and right click and run our script. Aha, so now going bottom to top, this time our error is on line five. That's what we expect. That's right here, line five. That's 
uh, with the same line of code that we had before. And if I keep going up here, I can see that here my debug statement um, that's on line three, when I tried to debug that variable, what I got was none. So what that really tells me is that this variable has, there's something wrong here. And if I look up, aha, sure enough, it's because I have level 12 instead of level one. So let's go ahead and change that. Let's clear our text board. Let's go ahead and make our operator not viewer active and let's right click run our operator. Ah, now we still have our debug message. We still left that in there. So it still shows up in our text port for us, but it does look like our uh, operation was successful. Now, one thing that we can also do here with our text port or uh, with our text stats is we can make them viewer active. We can comment out lines of code by using the pound sign. So by putting in a hashtag here, we've just commented out that line of code. And if we then cleared our text port and ran this script again, we'd see that sure enough, we don't have that debug message show up this time. There's lots of different ways that we can use a text port. And uh, it's one of the most powerful tools you're, you'll interact with, especially the more Python you start to write.